What's up, guys? Ryan Brown here for thelines.com, playpicks.com. Going to talk to you about Thursday night football between the Chargers and the Raiders. Before we get going, as always, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Really do appreciate all the support. We're growing here, and it's all because of you. Really do appreciate that a ton. Hit the thumbs up button, and then let us know in the comment section how you're going to play this game. Tonight, a very interesting game tonight between the Chargers and the Raiders over here at the Lions. We have a full written breakdown, so be sure and go ahead and click on that NFL. You just go up here and then week 15 odds TNF. Over here on DraftKings, we are looking at 353 and a half here on DraftKings over on FanDuel, 353 and a half over on BetMGM. Let's take a look here. We'll go to the main. And 353 and a half. And then at points bet, 353 and a half. So basically our uh, the moral of the story here is no matter where you go, you're getting the same numbers on this game as of right this second. 353 and a half at every single one of the books. I'll scroll a little bit if you want to read along. Let's, uh, let's get into some injuries here, guys, in this thing that uh, certainly might weigh um, how you view this game. On the Raiders' side of the ball, safety Jonathan Abram, defensive end Cleveland Farrell, cornerback Damon Arnett, and linebacker Nicholas Morrow are all out, as is Henry Ruggs, who was placed on the COVID-19 list. So four defensive starters, Henry Ruggs, out as well on that side of the ball for the Raiders. On the Chargers' side of things, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Austin Eckler are all questionable in this game. Now, Austin Eckler does a bunch of content over on Twitch, and he said uh, he's good to go. So don't worry about him. He's fine. He'll be good to go. Um, Keenan Allen trending in the right direction as well. Mike Williams, on the other hand, might actually miss this game. Linebacker Denzel Perryman and safety Nazir Adderley are both doubtful in this game for the Chargers. So neither team without their injuries heading into this one. Of course, the big news uh, heading into this one for the Raiders outside of the injuries is the fact that they fired defensive coordinator Paul Gunther after last week's embarrassing loss to the Colts. Interim defensive coordinator Rod Marinelli is going to take over, and it's a defense that's bad, guys. You know, it has been horrible. And so Rod Marinelli, is he really going to be able to get something, you know, turned around in three days? I mean, you know, a short week for him to try and take over this defense here. Um, probably not. So let's kind of start there with this matchup of the Chargers offense. And I'll scroll a little bit if you want to continue to read along. Versus the Raiders defense. So Chargers offense, 19th overall DVOA. Pro football focus doesn't like them all that much. Actually way down at 27th as far as efficiency for them. They do have a good pass offense. Pass offense is uh, middle of the ranks, middle of the ratings, according to Pro Football Focus, up at 11th, according to uh, DVOA. Now, on the rush side of things, they've not been efficient rushing the ball. They've actually been pretty terrible at it. 27th uh, DVOA, 26th in rush offense. Adjusted line yards is down at 27th. Their run block win, win, win rate down at 31st in the league. So, hadn't been able to run the ball really at all, which is probably why we see Justin Herbert throwing the ball, you know, as much as he had. Whenever we take a look at this, and we'll 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 look at it a little bit further, but there are some uh, there are some real signs that you know they're probably, despite the fact that the Raiders are so bad against the run, because that's the thing, you know, defense overall for the Raiders, twenty eighth overall DVOA, thirty first according to Pro Football Focus. So overall defense is terrible. Their pass defense, while bad. 21st and 25th, respectively. The run defense is actually worse at dead last DVOA, 32nd, and then 29th, according to Pro Football Focus. If you look on top of that, their tackling is horrible, which helps with uh, the run game, of course. If your tackling is bad, which, by the way, it's 32nd in the league as well, dead last. Yards per rush, 30th. I mean, it's just uh, it, the defense for this Raiders team has just let them down all season long. So basically what we have is a team that's bad at running the ball against a team that's really, really bad at defending the run. Does something give? Or do Chargers say, you know what, to hell with it. We're going to, uh, we're just going to pass anyway. You know, do the Chargers actually try and just run the ball regardless? 
Maybe not, you know, right, when we consider the fact that Austin Eckler is questionable. So, I mean, look, their pass defense is still bad as, as we look at it. Uh, when we look at the Raiders, 21st DVOA, 25th pro football focus. They are 30th in team sacks, so they don't, they don't hit the quarterback. They don't rush the quarterback. They only blitz at the uh, third lowest rate in the entire league. So, Justin Herbert should have time back there, um, despite the fact that they're pretty bad at pass blocking as well. But he's not going to be facing a lot of blitzes. Team doesn't get a lot of sacks. So we should be having a, a game where Her- Herbert, he's going to get hit. He's going to, he probably will take a couple of sacks, but like, you know, not against, not as much as he would against a regular team. And so he should have time to throw back there a little bit. I'll scroll a little bit more for you if you want to continue to read along. So let's look on the other side here and the other matchup being Vegas offense versus the versus the defense from the Chargers, right? Well, the Vegas offense has actually been fairly efficient all year long. I mean, if you've watched these games, they're scoring points. It's not like they're not scoring points. They just haven't been super efficient with the way they've been scoring the points. Uh, 15th overall DVOA, 13th pass, 23rd rush, right? Pro football focus right there with them. 16th overall offense, 10th pass. 17th rush. So middle of the pack offense, right? It's not bad. It's not good, but it's not bad. Problem has been, you know, really when it comes down to it, the, the that they, you know, Gruden wants to run the ball. They're just not good at running the ball. They're not as efficient running the ball. The run block win, run rate is down at, at 27th in the league. And they're early, which in, which shows you they want to run the ball in early down. Their early down EPA is down to 27th in the league because they're inefficient running the ball. They want to run the ball in early downs, but they're not getting any yardage on early downs. So it's like early down success rate is down, you know, in the, in the bottom half of the league as well. And so that's been the big problem here for this offense, right? If they would just come out and maybe just do like the, the Seahawks were doing earlier in the year and just decide, you know, we're going to throw every down. We'll run if we have to, but like we're going to, you know, let Russ cook. Maybe they let Carr cook, you know, but that doesn't seem to be the case. They continue to want to run the ball. And so what that does is against this Chargers defense that comes in, they're not great, actually. You know, 22nd overall DVOA. Now, pro football focus disagrees. Now, we see these advanced metrics sometimes don't line up. And this is one of those cases where they actually have the Chargers defense up at 12th over at pro football focus. DVOA 17th pass defense where pro football focus has them at 10th pass defense. So those are the big discrepancies there. Um, DVOA hates this run defense. Only Pro football focus only dislikes them. Um, one of the things to mention in the first meeting with these teams, if you go back and you look, uh, what you're not going to see really in the box score because if you're just looking at the box score is the fact that Joey Bosa and Chris Harris did not play in the first meeting between these two teams. So as we know, Joey Bosa, Chris Harris, two very good players going to be out on the field on the offensive side, by the way, Austin Eckler didn't play either for the chargers. So Austin Eckler, Joey Bosa, Chris Harris, all in this game for the chargers um, where they were not in that first meeting. What we are looking at here from this uh, chargers defense though, they don't blitz either. So they try to get all of their they try to get all their pressure with that front four. Now they will have Bosa out there, which they didn't have in the first game. But you know, one of the things is 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 Carr's been pretty good this year, despite the fact he would be without Henry Ruggs. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Henry Ruggs has been more of a decoy so far this year as it is anyway. He's more of just a spread the field guy to open it up for everybody else. Whenever you look at his targets compared to Waller and Renfro and Aguilar, it's way 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 down. So you, while you like to have the field stretcher out there, no doubt about it, um, you know, it's uh, they can find someone to kind of clear things out, I believe. But if you give Carr time, I mean, he's been he's been good. You know, he has actually been a really good quarterback so far this year. And so if that front four from the Chargers doesn't get home, it could be a long day because Carr could pick them apart. You know, um, yeah, he's not bombing the ball down the field too often, but he's got capable receivers. Certainly Darren Waller, one of the best tight ends in the league. Aguilar's, for whatever reason, he still drops the balls, but he's not dropping as many as he was dropping whenever he was at whenever he was elsewhere. So um yeah, pretty interesting there if that front four doesn't get home concerned. They don't blitz this Chargers team, so it's gonna have to be from from that. Um 
they've been really good on early downs and keeping teams from getting ahead of the chains. They are eighth in early down success rate defense. They're also sixth in early down EPA defense. So what Carr and them have to do is try and, and not allow this team to keep, continue to put them in third and longs because that's what they've been doing to teams all, all year is uh, being really good on early downs. And so, but the one thing that the, the Raiders will do when they do pass the ball is they're fine with doing little dinks and dunks and whatever. That's what Waller and, and Renfro are there for. So it will be interesting match of wits in this thing to see how they go about trying to get things done. So let's go over here and let's uh, let's take a look at some of the props that are available out here. Um, so for me, no nothing on the passing yard totals here, guys. Uh, that being said, if there were, I would have a slight lean. Um, I would have a slight lean towards the over on passing yards for Herbert. Again, I am, I am thinking that there is. Um, I'm kind of thinking that there's not going to be a ton of of running in this game, despite the fact that that's the the obvious way to go about it. But um, I think they throw the ball early and often. Listen, that's one of the reasons why if we come down to some of these other props that you can bet on and maybe they don't have them at DraftKings. But, oh, okay, so pass completions here. So you see Herbert is sitting at 25 and a half on pass completions. And we'll take a look at these player props at some of these other some of these other places. You can look at Herbert passing yards over here is over, up at 280 as opposed to the 277 that's over there on DraftKings. So pass completions for Justin Herbert. See, it's up at 26 and a half over here where it's 25 and a half over at DraftKings. Now, if we take a look, um, player props over here on BetMGM. Passing attempts. They do not have complete. Oh, there we go. Pass completion. See, it's at 26 and a half. So we get this over here at 25 and a half on DraftKings. Look, Herbert has over 25 pass completions in seven of his last eight games. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that they are one of the most throw happy teams in all of the NFL, right? They're one of the most pass happy teams that there is. And so what you're getting here, a guy that has over 25 completions in seven of his last eight games because he's attempted at least 42 passes in those seven games. So in the seven games where he has at least 25 completions, he's attempted at least 42 passes in those games. They are dropping Herbert back a ton, um, just all over the place. And so I do like the over on 25 and a half completions for Herbert in this game, despite the fact that uh, there's a, a lack of run defense from the Raiders side. Listen, they just don't run the ball very efficiently for the Chargers. And so with that, uh, something that I'm going to take advantage of is just uh, is taking the the over on the 25 pass completions there. Now, if we roll up a little bit a little bit further on the receptions, uh, if we come down to let's find Austin Eckler at five and a half. Listen, that's a lot for running back. I totally understand that, but Herbert has been looking his way. Early and often. I mean, seriously, he has been looking at him as a very, as one of his very primary receivers. Um, if you look at, you know, if you look, Austin Eckler receptions, five and a half over here at FanDuel as well. And it is, he had nine catches last their last game, right? I expect Mike Williams to not play. So that takes away one other option as well. Of course, not the same type of player at all, not the same route runner, but still it's one less option in the pass game for Herbert to try to get to. Uh, I know it's a lot of catches for a running back, but Eckler will line up in the slot every now and then. He hangs around, gets a lot of uh, short stuff. And listen, Herbert has been willing to go his way a ton. And again, if Mike Williams sits, uh, another one that I really, really like here is the over five and a half on Austin Eckler. As far as receiving yards, um, if we look at Aguilar, so he's at 55 and a half here at, uh, at draft, I mean at FanDuel. But if we look over here at DraftKings, he's at 53 and a half. So I do like the over on Aguilar at 53 and a half. I don't think we're going to find a better I don't think we're going to find a better number if we look over here at 
points bet even, so 54 and a half as well. So 53 and a half over here. And, and look, if you want to not pay as much juice, I'm okay with that. A yard is not that important. So um, if you wanted to go to the 54 and a half to where you didn't have to pay the uh, the extra juice, you know, that that's fine. Aguilar, 54 and a half on the over on that. Listen, with no rugs, Aguilar, listen, he's been the de facto number one wide receiver there anyway. Um, but now with no rugs, he becomes definitely the deep threat guy. Uh, secondary in this Chargers team that has, has definitely, um, it definitely has given it up through the air all year long as well. Um, and so with, with, with Aguilar and with this only being 54 and a half, with no rugs, like we're going to need like three catches at Aguilar for us to be able to get to this number, right? So um, looking at the over on 54 and a half on Aguilar, uh, 53 and a half if you don't mind the extra juice again over at DraftKings over here. So let's look at the lines and see what we are thinking here. Of course, we saw that it is 353 and a half at every single book, so I don't need to scroll back and forth between all of them. What do we want to do here? Um, seeing that this is starting to get juiced, and this is kind of where I sit on this game in general, guys. Um, seeing that this is starting to get juiced, I'm going to see if I can catch a three and a hook on the Chargers, and if so, that's when I would come in on this missing four defensive starters for this Raiders team. I mean, if they were fully healthy Raiders at three, I think would be a bargain, but they're not, uh, are missing a, a wide receiver on offense. Uh, Josh Jacobs has been banged up for them. And then on the defensive side of the ball, missing four starters of a bad defense as it is anyway. Um, this thing looks like it could move. It looks like the favorite could take more money. Looks like, we can get this thing to three and a half. If this thing moves to three and a half, I think we were juiced a little bit at one of these other places too. Yeah, you can see juice on the three here at FanDuel as well. So we're starting to move in that direction anyway as it is. Um, you can see juice to 115 here at MGM. So it looks like we're going to get to three and a half. If that's the case, if I get three and a hook with the Chargers, that's when I'm going to come in on the Chargers is at three and a hook. So be patient. It's not going to get worse than three for you if you want the Chargers anyway. Um, so just hold out, be patient, the th and look for that three and a hook. Um, and what I consider to be, despite the fact Anthony Lynn will, never, will no, without doubt try to give this game away, should be a competitive game. On the total at 53 and a half, I do have a lean towards the over just because these defenses have given it up all year long and I expect the offensive to have some success. Um, not a huge play for me. Might find myself on it with a very small wager, but I do lean towards the over. Very hard for me to find a way to the under here unless, you know, one of these defenses just has the game of their life, which we're not really planning on because they haven't done that all season long. So um, lean towards the over here. This Raider team has just given up boatloads of points, and the offense is good enough to score on their own as well. So uh, smaller play there, three and a hook right there, and, of course, the player props that we talked about uh, along the way of course full written breakdown over here at the lines and of course if you need uh, multiple sports books just come click on your state and we have very all the very best sign up offers that you can possibly get you can see free free money free bets risk free bets all the different things like that so take advantage of that as well go ahead and hit that subscribe button guys and in the uh, hit the like button and in that comment section below give us the exact score of this game so spell it out Chargers 77, Raiders 76. If you get it exactly right, we'll ship you an Amazon gift card. It's the giving season here. We want to give away, and we want to thank you for your support. Of course, you'll be a subscriber if you're going to do that, and you'll give me a thumbs up. you got to be a subscriber, and you got to like the video as well. And then uh, if you win, we'll ship you an Amazon gift card. Uh, appreciate you guys, and good luck on all of your bets.